Many of us are familiar with natural forest systems. They're the symbol of stability. Old growth trees mixed in with fungi and animals and lower growth species, all living in a harmony and abundance. But suppose we introduced edible food into that system and began to design a forest into a system that could also provide for the needs of humans. We could do that in our very own backyards. We can create abundance through a food forest. A food forest is where we mimic a natural system to grow food. And we do this by incorporating various layers into our system. A typical orchard just includes the fruit tree layer. But imagine if we incorporated an overstory layer mixed in with an understory layer down to a shrubby layer which then gives way to an herbaceous layer, down to ground covers, root crops, vines, even a mycelium fungal layer, and even down to including animals. All these different layers can fill in a garden to create a food forest. And what we've just done when we do that is we create stability, we create balance, we create abundance. Within my food forest, I have all sorts of fruiting, edible fruit trees. It's things that you would find in an orchard. I have breadfruit, mountain apple, abu, citrus trees, avocados, all these plants are growing here on my property. But what I did not do is just have them in isolation. I also have mixed in shrubs like Suriname cherries and Katuk. Also included are some ground cover plants like sweet potato and perennial peanut, mint. Also mixed in are some crops that produce edible roots such as taro and cassava, kava, and sweet potatoes once again providing another layer with that one plant. All these layers are working together to create abundance and also are working together to grow and produce with minimal inputs. The amount of work that I put into my food forest is negligible, but the amount that I receive back in return in the form of abundance is huge. Here's an example of one of the layering systems that I have in my food forest. Up above, towering over the rest of the plants, is an avocado tree. It grew from seed and produces the fattest avocados. But before this avocado tree was even here, there was a nitrogen fixing tree, a couple of them, that paved the way. Now there was soil, the conditions were right, and that avocado tree grew up on its own. But before that avocado tree had a chance to tower over, I also had a Suriname cherry tree planted and a dwarf lemon tree here. Once I cut out those nitrogen fixers, these plants began to fill that void. And I have these three layers of different fruit trees. And even down here, I have lemongrass, I have kalo, I have some sweet potato growing down on the ground and it is filling in all the different layers of the food forest. And all this happened over time. Now, in order to mimic a food forest, we have to mimic natural systems. Nature throws up pioneer species to pave the way for future beneficial plants. You can see it all across the islands here. Albizia trees, gunpowder trees, cercopia trees, all these plants are providing a function. While many people see them as a nuisance and junk trees, they are actually providing 
valuable soil building opportunities. They are putting nitrogen into the ground. Their leaves and branches are falling and building soil. The trees grow quickly to provide shade and to nurse younger, more sensitive plants, such as the fruit trees that you really want to be growing. When we are establishing a food forest system, we are predominantly focused on these pioneer species. Almost 90% of the plants in the early stages are pioneer species in a food forest system. It's okay to plant the pioneer species at the same time as your fruit trees, or to just plant them ahead of time before you plant your fruit trees. But what won't work is just planting your fruit trees without the pioneer species. If you do that, you're gonna have to include so many of your own inputs, bringing in manure and mulch from off site and wheelbarrowing all that in and doing all that work yourself. But by getting these pioneer species in first, you are developing a system that takes care of itself. If you're starting to get into the idea of a food forest, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video I just made on how to create a food forest of your very own. I'm sure that it'll deliver everything you need to feel confident about starting your own food forest. And if you hadn't had that chance yet, go ahead and plant your finger on the like button. Every like these videos get helps this channel grow and spread the word to help people like you grow food. Animals are another important aspect of a food forest. Many people forget about animals. Animals exist in a natural forest setting. There are deer, bear, chipmunks, lizards, you name it, all these little creatures living in harmony in a natural forest setting. And a lot of times those creatures help pave the way for new plantings and we can use animals to mimic that action in our own gardens. We can bring cows, pigs, goats, ducks, chickens into a system to clear and pave the way for our new food forest, which we would then plan out with those nitrogen fixing plants, which would then be succeeded by our overstory fruit trees and understory layers of everything else. The animals play an important part, not only just to pave the way for our food forest, but to provide continual fertility as the food forest matures. Now that my food forest is mature, I have chickens and ducks and wild animals coming through here all the time, not causing any damage, but providing fertility and pest control to help these plants grow even better. Creating a food forest in your backyard, on public land, wherever you can, is the future of mankind. My mentor said it best, all the world's problems can be solved in the garden. And what he was really talking about was a food forest. The stability, the regeneration, the abundance that takes place in a food forest is unmatched by any other system of growing food. It is the best way to grow abundance with very little work put into it. And it is the way that we can help support the people of Hawaii and people all over the world. And that's by growing and starting a food forest. Today is the day. Start yours now. Plant out some nitrogen fixing species, manage those junk trees so they can build soil and pave the way for that edible abundance that we call a food forest. So do you know what a food forest is now? I hope so, but if you don't, feel free to leave a comment down below. And thanks for watching today's video. I got tons more videos like this, so feel free to check out the channel. Until next time, ahui ho.